Hi everyone, so I'm back again. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you how to make uh, soft fruit for a change rather than flowers. And I'm going to do strawberries and blackberries. So I'm going to start off with the strawberries first. I am using a mould for this but I'll show you how it can be done without a mould as well. Uh, these I uh, got online from uh, AliExpress. Not seen any over here. Would have bought them over here if I could get them. Uh, but sometimes it's difficult finding things like that. The colour that I've used is I've used uh, Sugar Flyer Extra Strength Red Extra uh, to do this. For anything like red or black, the uh, extra range from Sugar Flare are the best ones. I've tried others and it's the best one that I've found. Normal reds only do sort of like an orangey colour, they don't do a proper red. So I've coloured some paste with red. So what you need to do first of all is you need to check that your uh, paste fits into that mould. So if you try it out before you put your wire in, that's not too bad. I've got a 26 gauge wire here which I've put a hook on the end, same as you would do if you were doing a rose and then if you put it into your ball of paste and then sort of start to roll it into a cone so you can fit it into your mould and then you can work it in like that put the top on give it a good press like that if you've got any spare coming out of the back like I've got there just nip that off and take your top off if you have difficulty with moulds it's a good idea to put them in the freezer so that they come out in one piece because sometimes with some moulds they are difficult to uh, to get out without losing your shape there we are got the strawberry a little bit of uh, the join on the edge just get rid of that and then you can set that to one side to dry now I'm going to take that off of there because I don't need that on there and to make a strawberry without the mould what I would do is Again, do the same thing, put your wire in, roll it into a cone, and then if you get a, a number two PME nozzle, and then just go into it like that, and just make your indentations into it all over. Now you could colour those in if you wanted to but I just find that's a bit of a waste of time because the strawberries that I've done look fine without having to do that. Uh, but anyway, whichever way you do it, set that off to dry on your, uh, pit, on your pad and then pop that to one side. <coughs> when you've done that and your cones are dry then you can add on to it. This is one that I did with the uh, piping nozzle, by the way. Um, and then you can pop that uh, when it's dried. You make a calyx to put on the back of it, a small calyx like that. And then set that off to dry. And you're ready to go. Right, so I'm just going to get rid of that paste now. And I'm going to get onto the blackberries because they take the longest to do. I'm just going to get rid of that over there. Now what I've already done is I've made um, a cone here. The same as you would with a rose. It doesn't matter if you've got nicks in it and things like that. Because it's going to be covered over anyway. Uh, it's just basically a shape to start off with. Because the blackberries that I've got. If I show you one here. They are quite big. Now some people might say well they're a bit big. I don't see them like that in the hedgerows. But... If you're buying strawberries that have been commercial, uh, sorry, blackber blackberries that have been commercially grown, they are quite big actually. It's because of the way that they're uh, they're grown. The ones that I buy from the market are anyway. So how I've done that is I started off with the cone. Now 
what you can do is to make your little berries and they need to be tiny so tiny tiny little berries like that and you need to make loads of them it doesn't matter if they're not all the same size because if you look at the uh, the way a, a berry when it's made or a real berry you'll find that they come out all different sizes and some of them are a little bit flat as well so it doesn't really matter that adds to the uh, authenticity of what you're doing now the small ones I've, I've actually used a mold for doing those and I've done these in green because these are the ones that have not ripened yet and the mold that I've used is this which is I got from the same place this one I found you do need to put in the freezer to get them out otherwise um, you can they'll come out misshapen the problem with them is they're a flat on the back but once you've got them into a spray and you put them together into groups like that um, they look fine when you've coloured them so that's how I've made those so basically that as I say that has come out of that mould so I'm just going to pop that to one side I have actually got some one or two berries already made up here which are dry and the, the easiest way I found because I tried gluing all over and putting the berries on fresh and it took me forever to do them because they kept falling off uh, the way that I found was the easiest way to do it is to get some of your black paste that you've made your berries with mix some glue with it work that into your paste to make a, a soft consistency this is what we use when we're mending things as well if ever you make mending anything keep bits of, your, bits of colour left because if you break a petal or a leaf or anything like that and you haven't got time to make another one and you need to repair it then you use this to put things back together again because once it dries it dries harder than the original petal or leaf that you're repairing in the first place but you'll also find that it will stay in place a lot better as well this is why you need to get wires all the way up your leaves and petals as near, as far as you can in order to be able to repair it then it's a lot easier if it's not on it so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put some of this gloop or whatever you like to call it on the cone if you spread it about let's take some of that off I'm not going to put too much on because uh, I'm only going to do a few of them I'm not going to do the whole lot and if you rest it down somewhere where you can handle it and then stick your berries on starting right from the base of your cone and then gradually work up and you can be up hazard, as haphazard as you want we don't want them in rows they're not meant to be neat and tidy if we just do up one side like that and then once you've done one side then you can go on to another piece like that. trouble is you get bits on your fingers and they do come off and then what I've done then is at the top on some of them not on all of them I've made some green and put those at the top of the cone just put those together let's put those right on the very end like that whoops it is a bit fiddly so once you've got then cover the whole cone with all your bits and pieces like that so we'll just pop that to one side and what you'll end up with is this so the next stage I've done with that then is I've used um, a burgundy colour I think that's the one that I used no it isn't that's not the one that I used what have I done with my burgundy it's here somewhere in the pile typical of me I've put it down somewhere and don't know where I've put it so what's that one 
that's garnet, we'll use a bit of that. And once it's all dried, which that one has, because the berries start off a sort of a, a reddy colour to start off with, I didn't bother dusting all over with them being black because I've got enough, again I've used the extra strength from uh, Sugar Flare. I'm just going to go around and I'm just going to catch the bottom of the berries like that. Not all over, I'm leaving a bit of the green showing. If you want you could add a bit of uh, a bit of green to that as well. One of the light green, that skin colours, that will just put a little bit of that on there. Like that. And then, if you've got some varnish, which I've got in there, and I've left it out so it's gone a bit thick, that, so I'm just going to add some fresh varnish to that. Now I'm not going to paint it on because that's a bit too much like hard work, is that? So what I've done is I've put it into a cap like this and then if you just dip the whole berry into the varnish like that, get it all over and I've lost one or two berries off there somewhere there we are so it's nice and shiny, just leave that to one side to dry Then you can come back to that later. And then the green one that I've done, I'm also going to dust that with a bit of the burgundy. The colour I'm using here is um, Garnet from uh, Edelblatt. Just catch the bottom. Of the berries like that. They start off a fairly light green so I'm going to dust them with a bit of uh, tropical lime also from sugar flare uh, not from sugar flare sorry from uh, edible art sugar flare do do a, a green very similar to this probably slightly darker uh, which is okay which I think is um, I forgot what they call it now so a little bit of that and just catch the top part of the berry like that and then again into your varnish just get your excess off like that so that's nice and shiny so we'll just move that out of the way And I'm just going to get rid of this off of here and put that back into there. So it might come in handy if I decide to finish that off. And we'll pop that black paste in there as well. Always keep your paste covered so it doesn't dry out. Put that to one side. And I've got a wet wipe here somewhere. Get rid of that off of there. There we are, just got rid of that. So then what we need to do then is we need to make the leaves to go with the uh, strawberries and with the uh, and with the blackberries. Now then there's lots of different varieties in all of these things so they don't, not everything has to be that obvious so uh, Gonna, I've got two shades of green here so I'm just going to mix them because that one's a little bit light. Now again the veiners I've got off of uh, from China because I couldn't find them over here. The uh, strawberry veiner that is which is this one here. I've not seen it from anybody else so uh, Sometimes you've got to look to see where you can find them. But what I have done is I've made my leaves all with rose leaf cutters. These are metal ones that I've got. Uh, the reason being, I've used 
because I've got two sets here. They actually come a little bit wider, these. These are from Framar. If you can get hold of those, um, they're very good for this. And uh, that large one I've used for the um, strawberry leaves, which are these here. That's the finished one. And then I've used the slightly narrow one. It's one that I've squashed. Bearing in mind, if you do go and squash um, any of your cutters, metal cutters or anything like that, you can only use them for that job. You can't keep bending them back into shape because you'll uh, more than likely break them if you do. So uh, just be careful of that. I know some people, when they're demonstrating, do that as a habit, but it uh, doesn't mean to say you can do it because they get a lot of... Uh, cutters given to do the demonstrations so what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll this out and then I'm going to cut out both the strawberry leaves and the blackberry leaves because I'm only going to do one of each I have actually used two different veiners for the uh, blackberries I've used this one which is uh, from um, Great Impressions from, sugar, uh, from Squire's Kitchen and then I've used this one, which is a much deeper veining for the larger leaves. This one, I think, is a, a Framar, oh, sorry, um, Aldeval Verna. I do like that one better, actually. should have done them all the same, but I wanted to use both just to show you the difference in the, uh, in the leaves. So I've got my trusty little roller here for doing my ridge up the centre but if you're using the cell boards or a groove board from anyone else then I would suggest unless you're doing a lot of leaves and you're used to working fairly quickly to do it that way I'm doing it this way because I'm doing it quick so you don't spend a lot of time watching me uh, doing loads of leaves so that's what the one I'm going to use for the uh, blackberry and then I'm going to use this one to do the strawberry. Uh, sorry, that's for the strawberry. This one's for the blackberry. I'm meeting myself coming back. It's been one of those days today. I did start doing this demonstration once before. And unfortunately, I forgot to charge my camera up. So it went off. So I'm having to do it all again. So here we go. So this one is going to be the strawberry. So I'm using a 26, a 28 gauge wire, which is the generally the wire that I use for all of my leaves. Have we done with my scissors? There is somewhere there. I'm going to cut it in four. When you're doing smaller leaves, I try and get as many out of a piece of wire as I can, rather than uh, keep cutting bits off and wasting it. Uh, there's no point in making them bigger if you don't need a bigger wire. So this is the one for the blackberry, which is a slightly narrow one. The reason I'm showing you this way is just to give you an idea of the different uses for certain cutters. And if you happen to have two sets like me, it does make it handy for doing different leaves. If you've got one that you can make slightly narrow because I, I prefer the narrower version for making my rose leaves that's why I've done that depending on what paste you're using this this is actually a mixture of uh, Squire's Kitchen and um, Renshaw's but if you're using Renshaw's paste on its own please put um, glue on your wire before you put it in otherwise your leaves will more than likely come off sorry but uh, I don't particularly like that paste for myself Although a lot of my students do use it because it's cheaper. <coughs> now the thing to remember is when you're thinning your edges with your dog bone tool or your ball tool, make sure you go the way the points go. So go upwards that way because that's the way the points go. Otherwise you're going to drag them back the wrong way. So around the edge, up to the top, like that. And then... We can go into your veiners now for the narrow one. This is the bramble. So into your into your veiner then from there. That's just curled underneath. Just lift it up underneath. 
and then put your vena on top <coughs> give it a good press and there you've got your bramble leaf give it a bit of shape and then onto your foam to dry and this one is going to be the rose leaf so then that goes into a different vena so this just gives you an idea of the difference in the leaves even though I've used the same cutter or same style of cutter give that a good press and there you've got a, rose, a strawberry leaf so there's your strawberry leaf there's your bramble leaf same cutter different veiners and they're swinging round because they've got the uh, Renshaw's paste in it right once you've done that and you've dried them then we come on to the colouring now unlike some leaves we don't need to use a lot of different um, colours for colouring the paste you just need to look at the leaves to see how they are and as it happens I've got some black blackberries growing in a, a basket in the back garden so I had to look at them now there's two ways that you can put them together you can either put them in threes or you can do like I've done on the uh, blackberries that I've done on my stem here where I've done them alternate because there are different varieties as well and it depends which varieties how the leaves grow and some of them do grow like that but also some of them grow in a group of three where you've got one big one like that and then two smaller ones to the side like that but I'm going to do them singly because if you're doing a cake with anything like this on nobody's going to argue with it as long as it looks like blackberries or it looks like strawberries or it looks like a rose or whatever else it is you're doing they're not going to argue with you and as I tell all my students if anybody criticizes anything you've done just say well you do it because the chances are they can't sorry those that can't <laughs> I'm not having a go at you right so this is a strawberry leaf so for this one I'm using ginkgo from edible art from uh, sorry yeah from edible art and if you haven't used their colours before you can buy them online either from a from a sugar craft shop that stocks them or from uh, edible art world of colour that's the strawberry leaf uh, I've got some more oh, I think I've just got two of them to do and just give them a waft over the back I don't put any more colour on my brush to do the back because the backs are lighter now then for your brambles I've got two leaves here that I'm going to colour I think those are the only two. and I'm using a darker colour here the colour I'm using here is uh, rainforest from edible art which is a much darker green so you give it a, a good waft all over with that very pleased to say that i haven't broken anything in this demonstration this is a smaller one this is done with the finer veining on it as i did in the last demonstration anybody that's watched my fern demonstration will see me smash a fern uh, unlike a lot of people I don't edit my videos if I make a mistake I leave it in because a lot of people are going to make mistakes and they're going to say oh well why does that happen to me and it doesn't happen to other people well it does happen to other people they just probably edit it out so uh, not having a go at any of my uh, competitors on here but uh, when I'm doing it in class, obviously everything is done in real time. So if I do make an error, then I make an error. And I own up to it. Right, so we'll just get rid of that out of the way. We'll just varnish these now. Now I've got here, I've already got a lot of... Um, leaves already made up that I've varnished and coloured 
Always make sure that you cover everything with some uh, kitchen roll. It's our best tool that we have in our work boxes for when we're doing jobs like this because you can wipe down with it, you can wipe your hands down with it, you can um, dust on it, you can glaze on it, you can do whatever you have to do in order to do the job that you need to do. So it comes in handy for practically everything that we do. So I'm just using neat varnish on here. Sometimes on some leaves, if they're not very shiny, we do dilute it with the uh, isopropyl or glaze cleaner. And the reason that I don't steam the leaves before I varnish them is because I find that when you varnish directly on the, pe the powder, it pushes the powder into the veins and makes them stand out a bit more. Which is not the way that I was taught to do it, it's just the way that I found was the best. We don't varnish the back. Sometimes with some leaves, if you're using a... Um, a mixed varnish then uh, we do just dip them in the in the directly into the varnish which covers the whole lot but when you don't want to shine on it that's probably the easiest way of doing it and that way you just dip it in your varnish and then just spin it to get rid of all your excess off it and then uh, you're ready to go so that's those varnished I'll just leave those up there to dry while I start putting the others together and make sure that you clean your brushes straight away as soon as you've finished with your uh, glaze and um, I always keep some in a separate container it looks a bit mucky that I know but I only use it for cleaning my brushes in so don't throw that away keep it for cleaning your brushes in and it stops your brushes from going stiff then so you keep them nice and soft because if you don't, they will go hard. Right, now on to assembly. So, I'm not going to uh, assemble the strawberries because I haven't got any spare strawberries. I've only got one there. Um, I did do some smaller ones in red and I tried dusting them at the top with a bit of green. The only trouble is when I varnished them, it came out like looking like dark red so wasn't very happy with those so that's why I'm not going to put those together but what I, all I've done with there is I've done three sets of leaves like that I'll put one set of leaves together and then I've put three sets of leaves and three larger berries and three smaller berries we always do them in odd numbers because they look, tend to look better that way but the blackberries are going to take longer to do that's why I'm going to put those together so I've got some uh, Moss green stem text tape here. For those that don't know, stem text is just a brand name. So I'm going to use that and I'm going to get myself a thicker wire. Here we are. I've got a 20 gauge wire, so I'm going to use half a wire here for this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this for the stem, I'm going to tape all the leaves onto this so so that it's a bit stronger for what I'm going to do with it. So if you start your tape off at the top, stretch your tape, tape it onto the top of your wire and then start off with your small leaves. So we'll start off with one at the top like that. Go down and put another one in. If you leave a little bit spare and then you can pull your wires in after you to make sure they're down to the wire with these because they do, they don't have a stem on them from the wire on these. Then I'm going to put a medium leaf in. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some small blackberries in as though they're just 